Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. I'm Jason Coulthorpe at Rochester Adams High School, where tonight there's a huge football game, but tomorrow morning things will be much quieter as the community holds a prayer vigil in an effort to bring one of its own home safe. Another Oakland County business targeted by thieves with sledgehammers. This time they got away with $80,000. All coming up, we're going to begin, though, with some snow in the weekend forecast. Paul, it was just yesterday that we were talking about how much we were enjoying temperatures in the 60s. Yeah, yeah it was it's almost speechless to think about that we almost had a record high. We weren't far from 70 yesterday, and now here we are talking snow. So let's not bury the lead here. We have splotchy snow that's going to start breaking out when we wake up Sunday morning, and then it's going to kind of congeal into an area of solid snow. In some spots, it's going to really be coming down for a while. So that moves through. Now we still keep some areas of snow through the afternoon on Sunday. And keep in mind, with the southeast wind ahead of the system coming in, some areas near the water are actually going to see a bit of a mix. But we still have areas of snow yet to rotate through as we move into late in the day Sunday and then things will start quieting down as we get into Sunday night. Now some of us are more predisposed to get accumulation than others. We're going to break that down for you coming up at 1117. Breaking out the snow meter for the first time this season and Monday is the start of firearm deer season. So we'll take you through the weather this weekend into Monday. All that and more coming up in just a little bit. Devin. Oh, it's just about this time two weeks ago when 18 year old Brennan Santo of Rochester Hills was last seen. The Grand Valley State freshman was visiting friends on the campus of Michigan State in East Lansing when he disappeared. The police investigation has hit a snag, but as Jason Coltharp reports tonight, his community is rallying for him with a prayer vigil. That prayer vigil will be right here in the morning, 10 a.m. on the Rochester Adams football field. The Santo family isn't speaking publicly right now about the case, but I was told they are very grateful for the community's support in the effort to bring Brendan home. As for the investigation into Brendan Santo's disappearance October 29th, the night before the Michigan-Michigan State game, police released new photos Friday showing some of the things he may have had on or was wearing that night. MSU's president also acknowledged that several security cameras were not working in the area where he was last seen. Police believe Santo's last known whereabouts were here at Yakely Hall, and they think he was leaving to head about a half a mile away to the Brody area where he was staying. Now, police are unable to get anything from the security cameras inside because they now know it was broken. So they have focused on tracking his whereabouts by using his cell phone activity. His phone activity ends just before midnight and puts him near the Red Cedar River, according to police. Crews have searched the Red Cedar by land and air extensively, but admit it's a difficult task to pull off, especially since the river was three feet higher two weeks ago. The current runs west, and the river extends several miles that way before connecting with the Grand River. However, police and Santos family have not given up hope. The other school involved in all of this is Grand Valley State University, where Brendan is a freshman. An email went out Friday to all students there offering support to his friends, his roommates, his professors, as the search continues. At Rochester Adams High, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. All right, Jason, the reward for information in the case is also increased now to $11,000. Another northern Oakland County business targeted by thieves who are using sledgehammers to smash their way in. This latest break-in happening at a liquor store in Orion Township. That's where our Larry Sproul is live tonight. And Larry, this time they got away with a lot of money. Good evening, Sandy. We are talking about thousands and thousands of dollars of cash. Now, the thieves walked, well, broke inside this door right here, walked inside, grabbed the safe with the money, and it was all caught on that camera. Cameras recording as thieves started to bash the glass door of Lee's Wine and Liquor Store off Baldwin Road in Orion Township. You can see the suspect smashing the door several times until he could unlock the door. Second camera capturing the other one from this angle, jumping over the counter and grabbing the cash register. Seconds later, you can see both of them walking out with what police say is a safe filled with about $80,000 inside and a 9mm Springfield handgun. 
The outside camera shows the two loading the safe in the trunk of this 2012-2014 white Dodge Charger with front left damage and a broken rear window. They pull off just as the Oakland County Sheriff's Office arrive. But Oakland County Sheriff investigators say this is not their first time. They believe they were involved in some gas station burglaries in Pontiac and Rochester Hills. Take a look from this Rochester Hills gas station security camera. You can see that white Dodge Charger with three men. They go inside the store, one smashing the cashier's barrier. They grab things and leave. The same MO in this Pontiac surveillance video. A white Charger pulls up, three men get out, smash the door, walk in, and then walk out. And a spokesperson with the sheriff's office tells me they not only believe that these three were involved in these incidents, but they believe they are a part of a bigger crime ring in our area. We're live in Orient Township tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry, at least 14 adults were taken to the hospital today after a car crash that happened on Hall Road near Garfield in Clinton Township. The police say a passenger van was hit by an SUV and we're told that van belongs to a special needs facility called Creative Empowerment Opportunities. 14 adults inside the van had to be taken to the hospital, several of them seriously injured. The driver of the SUV has minor injuries. Turning our attention now to the very latest coronavirus numbers from the state, and there have been 15,878 new cases. That's over the past two days. That's a daily average of about 7,900 cases. The state noting this total, though, includes results that were delayed earlier in the week. 83 new deaths also being reported, including 43 from a vital records review. A teenager accused of killing a child in a hit and run accident in Dearborn appeared in court for the first time today. 18 year old Jayon Collins pleaded not guilty to several charges, including leaving the scene of an accident causing death. Police say Collins was speeding down Bingham Street last Sunday when he hit six year old Batul Alfadawi. Prosecutors say Collins doesn't have a driver's license and should not have been behind the wheel. If convicted, he faces up to five years in prison. Hundreds of students at Bloomfield Hills High School staging a walkout this afternoon protesting what they say are racist incidents and racist messages found this week in the school. They say it's a pattern that's been ongoing for several years and the school administration, they say, they feel is not doing enough to address the problem. Some students even told us they're afraid to go to school. I don't know what I've ever done to any of the students here to make them feel like they, to make, to make them feel like we are so inferior that we must die or that we must leave the school or something like that. It's just really hurtful and I feel for my life, honestly. Their issue is the lack of responsiveness from the school administrators because this isn't new. This has been happening for years. The district will be hosting a special meeting at the high school coming up on Tuesday night to address the recent incidents. He broke down in tears. The attorney representing Danny Fenster telling the New York Times his client never imagined he would be sentenced to 11 years in prison. The Huntington Woods native was found guilty of three charges in military controlled Myanmar. Fenster was arrested back in May after the country's regime claimed that he was spreading false news as editor of the online magazine Frontier Myanmar. He also faces perhaps even more prison time because two new charges of treason and sedition were filed against him this week, each carrying a maximum sentence of 20 years. State Department condemned today's verdict as, quote, an unjust conviction of an innocent person. The global chip shortage causing General Motors to cut heated seats from most of its lineup. Be, might be a deal breaker for some buyers. Heated and ventilated seat options will no longer be standard or optional on several 2022 model year vehicles starting next week. Move first reported by the Automotive News. Impacted vehicles include some Chevy and GMC trucks. Heated steering wheels will also be eliminated from most of the lineup starting November 22nd due to the chips. Well, still ahead, it was one of the biggest bank heists in Cleveland history. A police finally solved a 52-year-old mystery coming up. The prosecution in the Kyle Rittenhouse case with a small victory in court today. What it means when the jury gets the case next week. But first, a carjacking ring. It's after some very specific cars busted by the feds. How they were taken down next.